Do you ever feel like you're in this state of paralysis where you feel like you're not good enough and you're scared that you might be exposed as a fraud, a liar, or an imposter? But you're not the only one, and there's a word for it. It's called imposter syndrome. And if you're feeling this way, I totally get you. It's really uncomfortable, it's super stressful, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You can actually use it to your advantage. How? Keep watching. Hi, I'm Jojo. Welcome to my channel, Traveling Petite Girl, where I like to talk about things about my life as a wife, a content creator, and a business owner. Sometimes I talk about blogging, sometimes I talk about personal development, and sometimes I like talking about food. But each time I share something, I share it in a way where you can learn from it and hopefully implement it in your own life. So let's talk about imposter syndrome. So it's not a real syndrome. Imposter syndrome is like a mental block or a state of paralysis, at least it is for me, where I start doubting my skills, my expertise, and myself as a whole. It shows up as a lack of self-confidence, feelings of being inadequate, not being good enough, comparing myself to others, and a ton of negative self-talk. It usually shows up in a work setting, and if you're someone like me who's in this entrepreneurial journey, it shows up like two or three times an hour, and it tends to affect people who are perfectionists. For me, I felt it the most at every big step I took in my business. I felt it when I started Pina Social Media, a social media management business. I felt it when I launched my first online course, The Bold Blogger Academy. I felt it when I launched this blog, Traveling Petite Girl, and I felt like a poser calling myself a blogger when I only had one blog on my website. And I still felt like a poser one year into blogging because I was comparing my successes to other bloggers' successes and I thought mine wasn't enough. What's important to know about imposter syndrome is that as uncomfortable as it feels, it's just a feeling and it's a mental hurdle. But at the same time, it's also like self-sabotage because you can really talk yourself out of doing something you really want to do. But you can use imposter syndrome as a signal that you're actually headed in the right direction. And you wouldn't be feeling this way if you weren't pushing your boundaries and pushing the limits of what's comfortable for you. So when I started Pina Social Media, I knew I wanted to help small businesses thrive through social media while at the same time working remotely. Getting started was really easy for me, like creating a brand and building a website. It was all things I'd done before, so they were all within my comfort zone. What scared me the most was finding clients and booking them because it was nothing I've ever done before. So in the middle of messaging hundreds of business owners, hopping on phone calls, walking into meetings and writing proposals, I was riddled with imposter syndrome. It was blaring at me like, Look at you parading as a social media manager. People are going to find out you're not a real one. You don't have the background, you don't have the education, and you don't have the clients to show up for it. I really hated it, but I couldn't let it stop me. I really wanted to work remotely. I was so deeply in love with my new boyfriend that I wanted to move to a new country and live with him. So instead of letting it take over me, I turned it around and thought, how can I make this work for me instead of against me? And then that's when I realized that having imposter syndrome meant that I was on the right path. And I can find comfort in being uncomfortable because I know what I'm doing is right. All I have to do is show up and everything will fall into place. And I'm a true believer of trusting the process, but it'll only work for me if I show up outside of my comfort zone. So for six weeks, I lived outside of it and reached out to potential clients every day. I barely slept, I got sick, I was so stressed. And within four weeks, I booked my first client. And within five weeks, I got two job offers that I actually had to decline because it didn't allow me to work remotely. And in six weeks, I spoke at a business conference in front of 100 entrepreneurs talking about the importance of social media. In eight weeks, I booked my second client, and in 10 weeks, I booked my third. And all of that allowed me to move in with my boyfriend, and it really made me happy. Um, and I'm glad I had that choice because now my boyfriend is my husband. <laughs> so great investment there. 
And I wouldn't have accomplished all of that if I let my imposter syndrome take over and sabotage me. So that's one of my many experiences with imposter syndrome. Did it ever get better for me? No, <laughs> it actually got worse um, each time I grew. <laughs> Most especially when I spoke at that conference because I thought, oh my God, 100 people are gonna find out I don't know crap about social media. <laughs> So no, it didn't get better, but that's because I was outside of my comfort zone and imposter syndrome only shows up when you're outside. But there were a few things that helped me manage my imposter syndrome, keep it to a minimum and overcome it until the next time I took another big step. Imposter syndrome is stressful because you feel like someone's gonna find out that you're not the real deal, even though you really are. I feel like people who get imposter syndrome are like, I have to do this and I have to do that. And once I do all of these things, I will be enough and I will not be a fraud. So even if they complete these things, they're gonna find more things that they need to do because they think what they just completed wasn't enough. So they have to do more things to be enough. So to them, they will never be enough. And when I say them, I talk about me because <laughs> this is how it is for me. And if that's you, then Do anything to make your brain go quiet. What I like to do is take a walk and like listen to nature, listen to the wind whistling through the trees. But lately it's been cold, so what I'll do is take out the candles and take a nice long bath. Another thing I'll do is stretch my body and meditate. Basically anything to minimize the chatter in my brain and make it go quiet. Another thing people with imposter syndrome have in common is that they don't acknowledge what they've accomplished. So it's hard for them to justify that they are adequate for the job because they don't take note of their successes. So after you relax, take out your journal, a pen and paper, or your notes app, and don't just write things that you crossed out from your to-do list. Write down what you're actually proud of yourself for. If you take 10 minutes to do this every night, you'll feel a lot more grounded and way less anxious. Because as you look at your list, you realize how much you did get done and no fraud would go out of their way to accomplish what you just accomplished. So start with the journal prompt, I'm proud of myself for dot 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 and write every single thing, big and small, that you're proud of accomplishing that day. Imposter syndrome is like a never-ending cycle of negative affirmations and the more you think it, the more you'll believe it. And from a scientific point of view, this is true. It's called neuroplasticity, where your brain forms new connections based on the way you think. So if you usually think negative thoughts, you can actually turn that around by affirming yourself positively and continuously doing that. And the more you do it, the more you'll believe it because you've rewired your brain with this new connection that now thinks your positive thinking is the new default. So here's a little graphic I made as an example of how I turn my negative thoughts into positive ones. So instead of, I'm not good enough, try, I am whole, perfect, and complete, and I am worth it. Instead of, oh, that was just luck, try, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Instead of, I suck at this. Try, I'm right where I need to be and I will put the time and energy to learn as much as I can. And instead of, I'm a fraud. Try, I am real. And all I need to do is show up as myself and do my best. You can screenshot this and save it for later. I'll also post this on my Instagram and you can save it from there too. So I like to affirm myself with notes and post it. I'm a visual person, so it just connects with me much better if I see it with my eyes. I'll have these affirmations next to my computer. I'll have it on my mirror. I'll have it all over my office so that when I walk in, I'll read them and I'll be like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> Stop thinking and be in action. So I find that when I do all the previous steps, doing the work is actually much easier. I connect back to my why and I'm not crippled with this anxiety because I'm not carrying this heavy weight of negative self-talk on my shoulders. And I actually get back to enjoying something that I truly love doing. So if you make a habit to do this every day, you'll feel less and less like an imposter until the next time you make another big scary step outside of your comfort zone. In which case you'll be doing these steps all over again too. <laughs> That's how it worked for me. 
So you might be wondering, will this feeling ever go away? And the good news is, yeah. But I don't think you want to. At least if you want to keep growing as a person, I don't think you want it to stop. Think neuroplasticity again. As you keep expanding beyond your limits, your brain will find that as the new default. And you're going to find it uncomfortable in being comfortable. So that's how I deal with imposter syndrome. Just remember that you're not alone. A lot of female entrepreneurs and many creatives go through this. And as uncomfortable as it is, it's a good thing to have. Just continue to show up and celebrate your accomplishments along the way. My name is Jojo and I love to talk about my life as a wife, a content creator, and a business owner. And I share in a way for you to find value in it. Please like this video if you learned something new about imposter syndrome and subscribe to my channel for more weekly tips like this. You can also sign up for my free resource library filled like a bunch of resources like templates, calendars, presets, and the whole bunch. All the info will be in the next clip. So thank you so much for being here. Let me know if you've experienced imposter syndrome too. And aside from that, I will talk to you next week with another video. Bye!